Hello, Scratchers. Have you watched the new series from Grief Patch? Making an RPG game in Scratch is blowing my mind. In episode 4, the character is controlled with arrow keys and working on a scrolling map. Today, I'm going to remix it. In my version, you could control the character with the mouse. And look at this. He can avoid the bushes perfectly. I will develop this new feature with Gandhi IDE. A scratch mode contains many useful extensions. This time, we will use A Star Odyssey, an efficient Pathfinder extension in Gandhi IDE. I will show you how to use it step by step. Here we go. First, you need to open a project in Gandhi IDE. I shared a remixed project in Scratch. It runs a little laggy because I have already modified part of it. Let's accelerate with Gandhi IDE. Add .host to the URL of this page. Then press Enter. Run it again. Hmm, it's smooth. You can find the link below this video. Click Save Inside. Now, we can remix the project. As I said, I have modified part of the project. First, I remove the background sprite and stamp the background with tail 024. Next, I increase the column number of the map to adapt to the landscape stage. Click the setting button here. You could find stage settings. Change it from standard to landscape. Hmm, it looks better to me. Now we are ready. Let's remix the project. First, add the A Star Odyssey extension. Click the extension button. You can find it. Here is the dock of the extension. Click install. Now you can see all blocks. I will show you how to use them in sample project. Let's switch. The basic function of A Star Odyssey is setting up a map with obstacles, then finding a path with a starting point and an end point to avoid all obstacles. In this project, there are two sprites, Scratch Cat and Maze. I want to make Scratch Cat move from point A to point B. Let's see how to make it. First, I will set up a map on the stage. Use this block, load an obstacle to a map. You can name the map and set a costume of a sprite as an obstacle. Furthermore, you can set a position and size. Let's set the first costume of maze as an obstacle. Name the map maze. Select maze. I won't change the position and size of it. Run it. Then, I can check the result with the debug window. Click this button. Then, draw debug canvas with maze. Now, you can see the result. The green part is a walkable area. The pink part are obstacles. Great. Now, let's find a path. Use this block. Find a path on a map. You could set a starting point and an end point. The result will be stored in a list. So we should make a list before we use it. Let's do it. Name it Pass. Then input Maze. The starting point and end point. Select Pass in the block. I won't change the final option. If you want to know the difference between smooth and keep raw, you could read the doc or just try it. Now run it and draw again. Hmm, we have a path in blue. Let's check the list. The path is stored as many points. We could use this block in list utils to get the x and y positions of each point. 
Number one item is X position, and number two is Y position. Let's make the scratch cat move in the path. Go to the starting point, then repeat the length of path. Each time, glide to the first point in the list. Then delete the first point. Let's run it. Hmm, it works. Now we have finished a simple Pathfinder project. There are three steps. First, set up map. Second, find a path and store it in a list. Third, make the sprite move in the path. Now, let's go back to the RPG project. In this case, the sprite is moving on a scrolling map. We could now simply set up a map on the stage. So, how to set up a pathfinder? Hmm, think about it. We could use the obstacle map as a minimap. Each pixel point represents a grid of the tail map. Then, we could find a path with the starting grid and the end grid. Okay, let's do it. First step, set up map. On this map, bushes are obstacles. We should set a grid with a bush as an obstacle point. The custom numbers are stored in the list grid. And the custom number of a bush is 78 or 79. So we could iterate through the list. If there is a 78 or 79, add an obstacle point to the map. Find the sprite level store. Make a block. Set a Pathfinder map. Run it without screen refresh. Let's build the block. First, clear the map. Name it Minimap. Then, iterate through the list. Make a variable for this sprite only. Name it Grid Index. Set it to 1. And repeat the length of grid. If the item is equal to 78 or 79, add an obstacle. Use this block. The X and Y position are the column and row numbers of the grid. You can learn how to get it in grid patch tutorial. On the minimap, an obstacle is a point. The width and height are both 1. Then, change the grid index by 1. When I receive store load thing, update Pathfinder map. Right, check with debug window. Nice, we could see the minimap. It's so small. Then, let's find the path. We need a starting point and an end point. The starting point is the grid where the sprite is standing. The end point is the grid we clicked. Find the sprite player. Make variables start x and start y for all sprites. Then, make a new block. Name it calculate player's grid x and y. Set start x, the column number of the grid. Then set start y to the row number of the grid. You could learn how to calculate in grid patch tutorial. Then when I receive tick player, run it. It will update starting point for each tick. Next, get the end point. Find the sprite tails. Find the block paint. When the sprite is painting the map grid by grid, we could find which grid was touching the mouse. Put an if then block here. The condition is touching mouse pointer. 
we could change the brightness effect of the grid to show the grid we touched. Then, make variables nx and ny for all sprites. Set nx to the column number of the grid, and set ny to the row number of the grid. Now, let's try it. Great! We could get an end point. Mm, but wait, when the mouse pointer is touching a bush, the grid is light up. An obstacle could not be an endpoint, so we should modify the condition. Only when the custom number of a grid is not equal to 78 or 79, it could be an endpoint. Let's try it again. Mm, great, that works. Now, let's find the path. Make a list first, name it Pass. When the grid is clicked, find the pass. Put an if-then block here. The condition is mouse down. Then use this block. Map is minimap. Input start x, start y, and x and n y. Select pass. Then select keep raw result. This option will return a more accurate result in this project. To get more information, you could read the doc of this extension. Let's try it. Mm, now we can get the path. The third step, make the sprite move in the path. The idea of the joy controller is brilliant. We could continue to use it. Find the sprite player, modify the block player controls. If the length of path is greater than zero, the sprite should move in the path grid by grid. If player X and Y are equal to the X and Y position of the first grid, the sprite should not move and the first grid should be deleted. Then, the sprite should move to the X and Y position of the next grid. Let's code. Delete this part. If the lines of path is equal to zero, set joy X and joy Y to zero. The sprite will not move. Else, we could calculate the x position of the first grid. If player x is equal to it, set joy x to 0. Else, if player x is greater, set joy x to minus 1. If player x is smaller, set joy x to 1. Same in the y direction. Copy this part, put it here, then modify player x to player y, joy x to joy y, x position of grid to y position. Then, if player x and y are equal to the x and y position of the first grid, delete the first item of the path. At last, let's modify the condition of player movement, because we delete the calculation of Joy distance. The lines of path is greater than zero should be the new condition. Now let's run it. Finally, it works. The sprite could find the path automatically and avoid all bushes. That's all. We remix Scratch RPG together in Gandhi IDE. Next time, I'm going to remix it into an MMORPG for multiple players with simple MMO extension in Gandhi IDE. What else would you like to add to your dream RPG? Join our Discord server and talk to me. Share your project with the community. See you next time.